and welcome back. Today we have the review of the new ABH palette called Primrose. This is what she looks like. So Primrose palette for face and eyes. Now to give you a comparison to the previous palettes, for instance, let's take Norvina. So it's longer and it's sleeker and it's thinner. Here. This is what the inside looks like basically, but I mean, I'm sure you've already seen it on pictures. Saddle is supposed to be a bronzer and what is this? Grapefruit is supposed to be a blush. I can tell you already, Saddle is not a bronzer on me. It's very orange. Let's just um, jump straight into it and play with this because I am very excited and I really want to show you how I achieved the looks and um, how the shadows perform. And I can just give you the spoiler. They are amazing. So let's go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is dip into the face products or the two face powders that are here. So what I'm going to do is just grab a very fluffy brush and lightly tip in there. Oh my goodness, do you see that? It's super orange. Let's try to blend it out. I just picked some more product. It's blending nicely. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. It is definitely more a blush on me than a bronzer. All right, now let's um, grab a different fluffy brush. This one from Mikitko, which is even fluffier. And let's dip into grapefruit and use that one as a actual blush. Okay, this color is nice. I like it. It's like this peachy pinkish you see how beautiful the apples of your cheeks? You could bring it up all the way up here to get this like sun-kissed look. So I'm going to do that with whatever is left on the brush. Actually, um, the powders in this palette in general are marketed... Oh, let me hold this in a way that it doesn't blind you like this um, to be um, used on your face on your eyes and even on your lips so what I'm going to do actually is dip into honey because this to me looks like a nicer contour shade I'm going to dip in here and let's try to tapping off the excess let's try to use this one as a contour because it's um, not as warm Okay, let's bring it up a bit here towards our temples. Warm up everything a bit. This shade is much nicer. I really like it. So if you have like a light skin tone or obviously a fair skin tone, this is going to be much better. It's a lot more powdery. But, you know. And since the pans are bigger in this palette, it's not going to be like you hit pan in one day. Now... For the other side, I actually want to try out something else. Mm, let's actually dip straight into, let me just check. Let me actually mix Honey and Rouge, those two, and try to make like a nice contour shade. It's quite dark as well, but let's see, maybe it's going to work. Mm. Do you see the difference? This is way too orange. This is still because I mixed in rouge, dark, but in my opinion, it's more red. Now let's take only honey without dipping back into rouge. Okay, I might regret this. <laughs> this was, it was way too much. Let's try to blend it out. Let's take the other brush. It's not bad, especially with my top in this color. I still think that this looks way too orange. This looks a bit 
a reddish warm as well it's darker even but it's still a nicer undertone for me let's bring it up here as well okay and now let's go into mango for the blush which is this like more peachy shade let's see what happens Mm, yeah, I love that. A lot more peachy than grapefruit. Because obviously grapefruit's going to be peachy pink and this is a lot more orangey peach. Those blushes, however, and like shades used as face powders are giving me more like spring summer vibes than fall winter vibes, you know? Okay, let's get started with the eyes. And let's actually grab the shade Honey on a fluffy brush and run this through our crease. And I don't know if you can see this, but to me in the pan, this is looking rather neutral, but on my eyes, everything's pulling very warm. Maybe warm is not the right term. Maybe it's just pulling a bit rosy, but it's definitely not cool toned. And I don't think we're gonna have anything cool toned in this palette besides the berry tones. Okay, it blended out like a dream. Zero effort blended itself, amazing. Beautiful on the eyes. Hmm, let's add a bit of mango. just a little bit higher than that and this is gonna add a beautiful peachy tone on top i like that and again blending like a dream very pretty and let's dip into rouge this shade here which is like a terracotta brown and let's very pigmented shades Let's uh, put this here. So I'm going to place it here and just blend it into the outer corner. Just first placing it there. Just going to add some more. Beautiful pigmentation. And I'm just going to try and blend it a little bit only because I just want it to stay in the outer V. Let me add some more and place it a little bit more in the diagonal form so that I can create a winged out shape. And I'm gonna grab the brush that I first used and grab a bit of honey again and blend the shade out. Okay, so now I don't think I wanna intensify, intensify this look anymore. I want to go into Fire Opal, this beautiful coppery shade. I'm just gonna take it on my finger, look at this, <laughs> and just apply it with my finger. Oh my god. Oh my god, do you see that? Wow, this is like liquid metal. Wow, this is like, I'm so impressed right now. It feels like I'm working with some sort of cream but I'm not and I even set my eyelids oh my god I'm gonna just grab a um, brush to make it go down to my like upper lash line and also to meet up here and be a bit more precise um let's step back into I'm actually going to dip into Subtle, which is warmer, and put that on the outer corner now. Because it's going to go so nicely with this coppery shade. It's going to kind of be the same shade, but in a matte. Do you see that? Wow. I'm, I'm just blown away by the shimmer. I haven't tried anything quite this beautiful in a long time for a shimmer. And just like only one swipe with a finger and it's... I'm just I'm just shocked. Wow. If you like a good copper, 
this palette might be just worth it for this one shade my goodness and the mattes are blending so nicely okay let's just blend this out a bit more and i'm going to grab sparkling amber Ugh. this more golden shade that has a lot of dimension and let's try this one on the rest of the eyelid like the inner part this is so beautiful i'm going to drag it over towards the inner part of the crease so that it's not like super precise but just more of this blown out look and then i'm going to bring it up here towards the brow bone because i really like doing that creating some beautiful sparkle here and just using that kind of as my brow bone highlight as well and just dragging it towards the outer corner like so I'm super impressed. I'm going to apply a teeny tiny bit more of Fire Opal to even intensify it even a bit more because this is clearly the star of the show. Wow. And same thing, drag it a bit over, but not too much because it's a lot darker and it kind of meets with the gold. So let's take Sparkling Amber again, intensify the inner part. Wow. Now let's take Mango, this shade here again, and uh, let's uh, blend here a little bit and also um, around the golden shade. I am so impressed. It looks beautiful. It's like the epitome of fall in a warm toned sort of leaves on the trees kind of way. Okay, let's do the other side with different shades now. I don't think I will be able to beat this one, but um, let's create something rosy now. So I'm gonna grab my Refer 27. And for this one, I'm going straight into Grapefruit because I want to create something kind of soft and everyday rosy kind of type of thing. So let's put Grapefruit as our transition shade beautiful shade as you can see it's a lot more pink like peachy pink i personally love this kind of shade and um with the berry tones you could use this one on the on the crease as well to create something more rosy or you could dip into honey and create something a bit more neutral not cool toned because as you saw honey is not cool toned but this one's a lot more rosy for sure okay again this shade is blending itself very easy to work with dipping into the shimmers Whew. let's see what happens here i'm going to dip into peony this first no well this bottom shimmer and use that as my main lid shade oh my god this is so stunning i feel like they up their game with the shimmers in this palette they are so dimensional and kind of dual chromey they have like a beautiful shift to them wow i don't know if you can see it but it's like a rose gold with a lot peachy pink dimension and this is a beautiful all over the lid shade so i'm actually gonna place it everywhere up to the inner corner as well and this is going to be a very soft kind of everyday like look and just drag it also towards the outer part the outer corner and just as i did before I'm going to drag it up towards the brow bone so that we have that beautiful shimmer there as well, but just tapping the excess so um, that it's not as intense. And that's it. I'm just going to take the brush again and just kind of blend everything out. And this is like a one shadow look with the matte and the shimmer. 
and this one i'm just gonna leave it there if you wanted you could for sure go into one of the deeper shades like the berry shades or the brown shade and just create a sort of a wing so just for the sake of the video i'm going to show you any sort of like winged eyeliner brush like this and just grab let's say i'm gonna grab claret because that's like more rosy and it's gonna go very well with this look actually okay and let's create a tiny wing with this powder shadow by just applying it towards our lash line like so with pressing motions and then just creating a little wing obviously depending on your eye shape you can choose um how much of a wing you want but i'm gonna just leave it there nothing crazy for the lower lash line i'm gonna do the same i'm just going to connect the upper wing with the lower lash line like this and that's going to be it for this eye look for the other side um on the lower lash line what i'm gonna do is just because i mean it's so beautiful already but what i'm gonna do is just take um the same shades we used before so basically um sparkling amber this one and fire opal and just run them on the bottom part of the eyelid uh, of the eye sorry i'm just so impressed guys i'm losing my words okay and now i'm starting to mix it in with fire opal if you want a full like bam look that's gonna look some sort of fiery but at the same time very sultry this fire opal shade is everything now let me intensify this eye <clears throat> by actually adding in a little bit of deep berry because i feel like this eye look needs a bit more drama it's just too yeah there we go like this is gonna make it a lot more sultry so if you want to intensify this um coppery eye and make it a bit more smoky and sultry just go into deep berry i'm just creating a tiny wing here as well and just smoke out the outer the outer um corner you see how this is going to change your look so you could <clears throat> you could be wearing this like for daytime and then if you need to change it up for nighttime you could always smoke it out more wow i like i'm so impressed by this palette i'm so happy anastasia came back out with a palette and especially this one because it's really beautiful okay guys so this is the first look the coppery one with those uh, more warm toned face powders and this is the other one the more like everyday rosy toned soft look i'm not going to apply any mascara or anything because i'm going to wipe off those two eye looks now even though i i, I just adore them and i don't really want to wipe them off but that's what I'm going to do because now I want to show you the third look. But I want to create something super sultry and sexy and berry toned also for fall. So this one would be kind of my everyday rosy toned, very soft, girly look that you could really rock at any time. And this one's like warm toned, fiery, sultry coppery, beautiful. And now we're gonna go create the sexy berry smoky um yeah kind of look that this is what i came up with for the final berry look i don't have any liner or lashes on yet but i did my face and my eye makeup all using this palette so i'll recreate it on the other side and show you how i achieved it and um if you think i'm looking a bit funny that's because <laughs> i couldn't help myself and i just had to do some blush draping if you don't know what blush draping is it's a technique that is used very often like uh, when it comes to editorial makeup 
um, which means for magazines or um, advertising. That's why my blush is looking extremely heavy. So this is not something that I would necessarily wear out because it's quite extreme and my eyes are already quite extreme. Plus the lips are gonna go extreme too. But it's a very uh, editorial makeup look. And I just couldn't help myself because I was so excited playing with those shades. So let's get started with Honey. This is the first shade that I grabbed. And I just run that one through my crease and above my crease actually, just to create some depth and to place down my initial shade, which is gonna be our transition shade basically. And I'm bringing it quite far up because this is going to be quite dramatic and I'm already dragging it out like so towards my hairline. Obviously, if you don't wanna create anything like this, you don't have to do that. But because I'm gonna do the blush draping afterwards, I am already kind of winging it out, dragging it towards my hairline and just making sure that I place some color here. Now, the star of the show is gonna be Primrose, which is what this palette is called after, this shade here. Look at this shade, I mean, I just can't. It's like this dusty, rosy, purple shade. Okay, so without tapping my brush off, I'm just going to press it into my skin. So no blending here, just press, see? Like that we get the most pigment out of the shade. And don't worry, it's gonna look a bit funny because this sort of very dramatic look is gonna tend to look funny until the end. So there we placed it. Now I'm gonna turn my brush and start blending it out a tiny bit. Like this is going to take a lot of blending. And just, this is the first, the first blending. And again here, I'm just gonna drag it out because of what I'm doing. Obviously, feel just free to leave it here and not drag it out. I just sound like a broken record, I guess. Just going to buff it out here, create a lot of drama in the outer part, and also bringing it into here and just buffing it out. I don't know if you're able to tell, but those shades are beyond pigmented and they are blending like a dream. They are just amazing, amazing because they are so pigmented, but also beginner friendly because of the blendability that they give you. Okay, so now I'm gonna start bringing the shade down here. Oh yeah, so blush draping. Basically what that means is you're gonna kind of extend your, uh, your eyeshadows into your blush. So don't do this if you have never done it because it's going to make a mess. And as you can see, it looks like a mess right now, actually. That's going to be quite difficult to make it look good um, the first times that you do it. But basically, it's just a technique that is very often used for editorial makeup. I really like it. Um, there is no bronzer involved, as you can see. It's just eyeshadow and blush. And... Um, yeah, the way you do it is just basically you drag out whatever you have on your eyes and with the excess you just create your blush and you create a very monochromatic effect. And I think this palette here works really well for that. Now I'm going to grab um, a blush brush to blend this out. make it look more seamless. And I'm gonna grab the tiniest bit of grapefruit for the apples of my cheeks. And just bring it up to the nose. And then just keep blending. Because this like blush draping technique, you want everything to be very blended and kind of seamless and just bring it up a bit. We're looking very pink, I know, I know. Right, now we lost some intensity of that shade, so now I'm gonna go back into Primrose. 
and just place it here again to intensify that shade. And this time I'm not really going to blend, I'm just going to intensify the depth of that beautiful shade, which I want to be everywhere at the start of the show. I'm going to take a clean blending brush or fluffy br brush and just blend the edges. I'm grabbing uh, my Refer 12, which is this kind of very interesting shape and dipping into deep berry. And this is where the drama is going to start. Just going to take quite a bit of this shade, which by the way is the hardest and driest one in the in the palette, which is quite normal because um, those like very dark <laughs> shades tend to be a lot drier. Okay, what I'm going to do now is bring tons of depth to my outer corner, but in a diagonal way. So the shape is going to go like this. And we're going to just pack the pigment on first and bring it into the outer crease. So far, I'm just packing pigment. I'm not blending. So it's going to look funny as well. With those sort of like very dramatic looks, we need to trust the process because if we look at the way it's looking now, it's just <laughs> terrible. Okay, now that we place it, let's turn the brush and try to wing it out a bit like this. But just very carefully and also blending here a tiny bit into the crease. Let's take the brush that we used for Primrose and let's start blending that out. And here you just have to take your time to make sure that you create a seamless blend and you don't have any patchiness going on. We're going to place um, Rose Water, the only shade that we didn't play with from the shimmers yet, on the lid. And as you can see, it's the lightest one of them all. So it's going to go over the dark shade. That's why, and it's quite uh, translucent. It's not as opaque as especially Fire Opal and Sparkling Umber. So that's why it's good to have some of that Primrose color blended into, like onto our lids as well. And now basically I'm going to grab um, the clean fluffy brush and take a little bit of honey to have the excess off. And just make sure that I use that here to blend out the berry shades. And as you can see, that's going to create a bit of warmth around it, which I think looks very cohesive and just makes everything look a lot better. Just gonna blend the berry and this is where I'm just gonna blend everything together and drag it out again and yes I'm gonna use the X's on my cheeks. I'm gonna take a bit more of honey and actually place it on my cheeks you can see it's a lot more brown and now take my blush brush again and just blend this. I'm going to grab a little bit of deep berry, but this time I'm going to grab it on a blending brush and just make sure that I blend this out, but that it's still looking super dark. Now that this is beautifully blended, I'm going to grab my blush brush and dip it slightly into primrose and continue with my um draping this is gonna look nuts right now look at that very purple i mean i love me a purple blush but this is gonna look quite ridiculous at the beginning i'm gonna take this big fluffy brush from refer the number five and make sure i blend this out now that the draping is done. I'm going to take my uh, foundation brush and grab a little bit of powder to clean the edges here because it gets quite messy. 
And even if we don't have any bronzer on, we still want to have some sort of a line here, like this. Now again, taking the refer brush, blending everything out. We're going to dip into rose water. First with my finger, I'm going to show you how stunning that is. And this part left now is the quick, the quicker part so we're gonna just place it here and it's very pinky but it has a lot of dimension i'm just going to bring it all the way towards the dark shade and i'll show you in a minute how you merge those two together so that you don't have any harsh edges and basically you're gonna the excess that you have on your finger, you're going to just place on top of the dark part. Not all the way across the corner, but like just where they merge together. And now you're going to take the brush where, you know, we had deep berry. We're going to tap just the tiniest bit on our brush and we're going to just tap over the shimmery part. Just where they mer merge together here. And I don't know if you can tell, but the shimmer kind of takes a little bit of this dark color. And it looks like the shimmer would be a different shade of shimmer. That's very, very nice. So instead of being this rosy, pinky shade, it seems like you have a purpley shimmer shade in the middle. That's basically what happens from um, yeah, merging those two shades together. The deep berry shade and the rose water shade. Okay, now I'm going to grab um, just like a pencil brush like this and take some more of Deep Berry. And I'm going to place this kind of here and just create a wing. I'm going to take a bit more of Rose Water and just like a second layer basically and just do my favorite thing that I did with the other shades uh, with the other looks as well which is drag this in a diagonal way towards the brow bone look at that sheen it's incredible and bring it down here towards my cheekbone let's take a little bit more of primrose to make sure we don't lose that shade here with all the shimmer and very carefully just bring some of that back and of course a bit of deep berry so we don't lose the depth in the crease even though we have the shimmer okay let's take a clean blending brush and just again blend the edges now i am taking this pencil brush from refer 26 that's a bit uh, bigger and just grabbing primrose i'm gonna bring primrose all the way down here so this is gonna be our lower lash line shade i am going to take um a little bit of honey tapping the excess off and just blending this out let me grab this Sigma highlighter brush and I'm sure you can tell I used a uh, rose water as a highlighter shade as well. So just the tiniest dip in there. Look at this. I mean, it's very, very pink, which is not my favorite thing, but just for the sake of the video and testing out the products on our face as well and bringing it up here as well. Look at that. I mean, you could definitely use those shades as highlighters. They look stunning. Now tapping this over the blush and just creating a very glowy cheek. Okay. The last thing I'm going to do is grab my Soeva 232, uh, 232. A flat shader like this and a tiny bit more of rose water. And I'm just going to use this on the inner corner, drag it down here. 
and just emphasize this like inner part and in case this doesn't look the same anymore i'm just gonna do the same on the other side again just in case we lost any pigment like that and just with my finger just gonna merge everything together again and now again fluffy brush blend everything out here especially in the on the inner part there we go okay this is it guys i'm gonna go um off camera do my liner lashes and uh, line my lips and i'll be right back to create um to apply some of the shadows on our lips as well and then i'll give you my final thoughts okay here we are lashes i just used my mark jacobs um mascara the velvet noir major volume mascara my mark jacobs liner in uh, brown and what else uh just some some random um, kiko lip products um which are in this berry shade any berry shade uh product that you own will do what i wanted to try out now for the last thing was just to top my lips with something from the palette and um to be honest i don't know what to do <laughs> like i'm so tempted to use primrose so let me just grab primrose on my finger and you know that this has like those um, glitter specs. Let's do this one. Let's try a gradient. Oh, this is beautiful. Mm, do you see that? It's giving us a little bit of this like purple. Mm, very beautiful like matte powdery effect be uh, careful and don't dip your finger back into the pan after you used it on your lips because it's gonna ruin the shadow so take a new um a new finger each time the matte shade is not great to do this because it's getting patchy But this is a very creamy lipstick as well, so it will depend. Mm, I'm liking how it transformed the shade, but I don't think that the finish is the best. Now, what do we do? Mm, do we take some peony, maybe? Let's take some peony, because that one has some rosy tones. And just apply that to the center. Okay. Um, the description of the palette says that you can use those shades on, on your lips as well. Mm, I wouldn't recommend to do that, to be honest, I think. Just use your regular <laughs> lip pencils and lipsticks, you'll be better off. Um, so I'm going to go clean my fingers, because look at the mess I just created. And um, then I'll be right back again to give you my final thoughts. All right, so final thoughts on this palette after creating three looks when i looked at this color story it was confusing to me it was like oh is this more of a like spring color story is this not going to be very boring and neutral again and you know it's the same thing as always and i kind of thought you know if you have soft glam you have norvina you have all this i'll show you soft glam and norvina in a sec like for a sec i just thought it's kind of you already have this one right it's like those two had a baby. And in some way, I will tell you, I still kind of think like that after using it. But first of all, they have, like, they must have improved their formula because it just has less fallout or kickback than those had. The shimmers, in my opinion, are much better, even better than the ones before. Obviously, it might also be the fact that those have been open for a while already. And what I think is, it's going to be an amazing companion palette. Not really companion palette, but like it's... No. Okay, let me rephrase. So it's going to work really, really well with the original Norvina palette. This one here. Let me show you side by side. 
Like they're gonna work ugh, beautifully together. And then when it comes to soft glam, mm, I mean, it's gonna add some beautiful, um, I just don't like soft glam personally so much. So for me, this is a lot more interesting, but what I want to, what, I, what I'm trying to say is, if you have those two palettes, oh, I just looked at the new one and I thought, hmm, I don't need it, you know, it's kind of the same. Well, let me tell you, it's not. It's not. First of all, Primrose. I mean, I'm just in love with the shade. In love. Then, Grapefruit, Mango. Those two shades, we don't have them in any ABH palette. They are completely different. And then this deep berry shade that I just apply in my in the last look that um, I created. It's just such a dream. Like those three shades here are just like berry dream for me. The shimmers are stunning. I just wish this subtle shade wasn't in here because I, I just don't like the shade. It performs well, but I just don't like the shade um so no it's very different the shades that we have here like those two like um orange soda and burnt orange they don't have anything to do i'll just show you mango and grapefruit and then i'll show you orange soda and burnt orange so this is mango uh grapefruit let me put a bit more of grapefruit like this so they're like peachy and then we have orange soda no oh, wait a sec okay uh yeah orange soda and burnt orange so they're just all different this orange soda is gonna go beautifully with those and this one as well but they are all different when it comes to Norvina this volatile shade and incense those two are a lot more cool tone than the ones in the new one so those are gonna go beautifully with the berry shades and then we have this drama and celestial those are beautiful purple shimmers they're gonna go beautifully with the berries in here so i feel like i'm gonna pull out norvina and soft glam to play together with a new one and that's going to be something that I will be doing for the next few weeks and see how they play together and also compare the formulas again because I have the impression that this new palette contains an improved formula. I'm not Would I recommend this palette? Yeah, I do recommend it. If you, if you look at this and you think, oh my god, I would really like this color story, I recommend it. If you own those two palettes, and um, you're on the fence about it, maybe pull those two out again, play with them a bit more, see if you still like the formula, see if you still like those tones that might be a bit similar, and then go from there. Um, and I will be playing a bit more with this. And as I said, let me know if you want to, you know, see any other um, looks. Anyway, that's going to be it from my side. I don't think I forgot anything. Uh, I think I already told you that I wouldn't use it on my lips. And that's going to be it. I recommend the palette. I think it's going to be a beautiful companion to those two. And I'm going to try it in that way. And yeah, that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed. I know this video is probably going to be super long. Thank you for watching. If you liked it please hit that like button and if uh, you want to be notified when I upload the next video, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. See you. Bye guys.